Father's Day began when a woman heard a Mother's Day sermon and decided that she did not want all that her dad had done for her to go unrecognized. We might identify with this woman. Uh, I think I, I read, I know I read this past week uh, when uh, uh, Father's Day began, and I cannot remember when it was, but uh, uh, I was surprised that it was while Nixon was president that it became a, uh, yeah, a, a national holiday. So anyway, uh, I hope we can relate uh, to that woman about our fathers. If your father is still living, then tell him how much you appreciate him. If your father has passed, I hope you have precious memories of him, and I hope you will thank God for him. Honoring fathers and mothers is very important because the Bible commands us to <coughs> honor them, to obedient, be obedient to them. In Exodus 20, one of the Ten Commandments is honor your father and your mother so that you may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Now, I know the Lord was going to give the Israelites who these uh, Ten Commandments were first given to uh, they were, they had a promised land they were traveling to get to. But that wasn't all they, they were traveling to get to. There's also a land that is not of this earth. And we all want to have a long life there, or we should. There are probably some who don't, but they should. And, uh, so I'm not so sure that this is a long life promised to us on earth, but it is a long life with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wisdom literature of Proverbs, uh, we read some verses that instruct us how to honor our parents. And it teaches children how they are to behave. <clears throat> In uh, chapter 1 of Proverbs, we read, my child, listen when your father corrects you. Don't neglect your mother's instruction. In chapter 19, children who mistreat their father and mother are an embarrassment and a public disgrace. Chapter 23 of Proverbs, listen to your father who gave you life and don't despise your mother when she is old. And finally, in Proverbs 28, anyone who steals from their father and mother and says, what's wrong with that, is no better than a murderer. Some people have had fathers or father figures who have failed. them. It may be that they were absent from their lives or it may be that they were just unconcerned about their children. Maybe even abusive and cruel. And there are some folks who have, who have not become believers because, or have, or have not become believers or as close to God as they might have been because of their relating their earthly father to our, the Father God. Many times a negative association with a father figure is simply too strong to overcome. A person I know had this experience and it negatively affected his view of God. Our Creator God is our Heavenly Father. And he is the perfect example of what it means to be a dad and to be a mom. 
So I want us to consider some of the characteristics of our Father God this morning. Uh, characteristics that uh, we can imitate to be good parents, and even uh, children can imitate to be good children, and hopefully someday to become good parents also. We're going to look at each of the letters that make up the word Father. And in that, we will see some of the qualities that sets God apart from we human beings, and provides a model for parents. F is for forgiveness. Forgiveness is a huge part of our relationship with our Father, God, and with our earthly Father. Our Father God is willing and able to forgive us of any sin that we commit if we will only ask Him. And folks, it's comforting to know that nothing we do is ever so bad that God will not forgive us. Romans 8, 38 and 39. The Apostle Paul wrote, And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And then in 1 John 1, we read, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a promise that is to us, folks. Do not neglect. to confess and turn away from sin so that your relationship with our Father in heaven can continue. That that verse in 1 John 1, 9 is, is unconditional acceptance. And it's something that we as parents should imitate. A is for active. God is active in our lives all the time. I can look back at times. Think about some times that although I wasn't being what God wanted me to be, He was active in my life. He's always at work around us. And we should be asking our God to show us what He's doing. We need to see what He's doing because it's amazing the things that He does. And and folks, He is inviting us to become involved with what He's doing. He wants us to become involved with what He's doing here in this church. You know, it's it's really wonderful that God wants us to have a part in working with Him. And we don't have to wait our turn to be active with God. Jesus said, John 5, 17, My Father is still working, and I am working also. God created every one of us. Every person that He has ever created was to be involved in His work. Ephesians 2.10 tells us, For we are His creation, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time 
so that we should walk in them. God has work for all of us to do. He has certain things that He put you on this earth to do that will honor Him. And we need to know what that is. And we need, you know, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord, then you need to come to Him and so you can find out what that is. And you see, we need to do that because we are responsible to learn what God's will is for our lives, and we are to do His will, which will bring glory to God. And that is our ultimate purpose for being on this earth. He put us here to glorify Him because He is a great and wonderful and awesome God. T is for time. God always has time for us. Even though we human beings get way too busy sometimes, when we neglect giving God the time that He deserves, He still has time for us. Whenever we feel lonely, or whenever we're struggling with a problem, or we have a concern in life, He is there for us. There's not a time in our day when God is too busy to listen to us or even to talk to us. He speaks in a very small voice, but He speaks. God's Word tells us, Call to me, and I will answer you and tell you great and incomprehensible things you do not know. God's wisdom is what we all need in our lives. And all we have to do is ask for it. H is for heart. The heart of the matter is that God knows our hearts and He loves us anyway. Isn't that wonderful? Huh? Yeah. Whenever... Uh, God, actually, God's Word tells us about the heart. In Jeremiah 17, the human heart is the most deceitful of all things, desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? Some people may not want to be around us because they know we make mistakes. But God... God wants to be with us anytime, even when we mess up. And He alone is able to fix that. He is able to change our hearts to, so we can be all that He created us to be. E is for everywhere. God is everywhere. The psalmist David wrote, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I live at the eastern horizon or settle at the western limits or at the end of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, your right hand will will hold on to me. Yes. Wonderful. What great news for us. God is not limited by time or space. He is everywhere at all times. How do I know that? Because nothing is impossible with God. The Bible tells me that. Nothing is impossible with God. Isaiah prophesied long before Jesus' birth. And it was fulfilled in Matthew 123 where uh, Matthew wrote, they will name Him 
Emmanuel, which is translated what? God is with us, yes. Prophesied, fulfilled in Jesus. And Jesus said in Matthew 28, 20, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Folks, there, is, there isn't anywhere that Christians can go where God is not with us. It's encouraging to know that when we encounter tough times in our lives, God is right there with us. It may be that other people are not, but God is always by our side. And then we come to R. R is for rest and read. And these are two areas where uh, a lot of people could use some work. Rest is important to us because it is easy to become so busy that we don't take time to spend with our Lord, our God, the one who sent His Son to take our place on the cross to pay for the sin that we have committed. We sometimes don't take time to let Him know how we feel about Him. He wants us to set aside daily time to rest in Him and to read His Word. Mark 6.31, Jesus said to His disciples, let's go off to a quiet place and rest a while. Now, I know there are folks who say, well, you know, uh, I can rest and, and do this. I don't have to come to church or I don't have to take time to read God's Word or pray or do anything like that. But folks, it's called sacrifice. God sacrificed for us. We are to sacrifice for Him. Uh, we are to give Him His time. We are to give Him... We're to give Him his li our lives. He requires that of us. The best way to get to know our Heavenly Father is to spend quality time resting and reading about Him in His Word. All the qualities of God's character make Him who He is. If we have been blessed with an earthly dad who has a lot in common with our Father in Heaven, then we should be thankful. If we have missed out on a relationship with an earthly father, we should be thankful that there is a God who is there for us. And He wants to meet our needs in our lives. He cares. He loves us. He loves us so much He gave His one and only Son to die in our place. Let God know how much He means to you. And parents and children, imitate our God. Imitate Him. Imitate His Son Jesus for Jesus is God.